front of the 80. Well, hello and welcome to a new episode of the Beyond the 80 podcast brought to you by Neds. I'm your host, Dan Talentire, and as always, I'm joined by some very special guests right across the game of rugby league to talk all the latest news and opinions and have a bit of fun along the way. I'm very lucky to be joined today by a man who's actually several hundred of kilometres away from me, but a very key part of West Tigers. Moses and welcome to the podcast. Mate, whereabouts are you now? Oh, mate, I... It's funny, actually. I just got back. I just returned, so I was down at um, I was just down uh, south of Gerringong in Jarrah. So took the kids down there and um, we hid out in isolation for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, nice. What what made you the decision to go down there? Oh, I just love it, to be honest. It's just a good part of the world and uh, nice and quiet. Uh, kids love it down there. So not as many people in town as, as Sydney. So um, I guess there wasn't too much to do in isolation around my place. So I um. Went down there. <laughs> I was going to ask you, man. Obviously, isolation is a pretty challenging time for everyone. But when you've got three young kids, I can't imagine there's a lot of quiet in your house. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're you're bang on there, man. We um yeah we've we've really had to exhaust all op- options to keep the kids entertained. So uh, we've got Easter coming up this weekend. So there's a fair, fairly big motivator in chocolate to keep kids quiet and okay. keep them going. So we um we've we've done some arts and crafts around. Easter egg hunts and Easter egg um, paraphernalia, but you know, the kids are looking forward to that. Nice, mate. Uh, for you, mate, you're, from your kind of fitness side of things, you're a pretty fit guy to begin with. Is there, the training load been much for you throughout this time? You've just been trying to keep it ticking over a little bit? Man, I've been training hard. I think I've been training harder. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's funny because I see, like, I was coming back from my knee injury, so I sort of hadn't even hadn't even fully graduated from the rehab group when I when the competition was called off. So I um I've been really progressing quite well actually. I've got my my brother who he fights in a, as a professional Muay Thai fighter. He's come down and stayed yeah, with wow. us for a couple of weeks and um while because he lives alone up in up in Queensland he decided to come and stay here and help out the kids and help me do some training. So he's been putting me through my paces which has been quite tough because the training has been a little bit different so you've you've gone from not playing any footy to now being trained by a professional muay thai fighter exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> been playing, not going to playing any footy to get punched in the face for 20 minutes so. <laughs> <laughs> mate i was gonna say that must have been frustrating like i know we talk about it's just a game of rugby league but for you mate you'd get knocked out and do your knee in the trials you're expected <laughs> to miss what was it the first two weeks and then the plan was to bring you back against the bulldogs was that going to be the game you were going to come back in or yeah, it was certainly looking like that. Uh, yeah, we um, the plan was I was chucking yeah real well to come and play round three, and I was looking forward to that after a pretty dour dour um, viewing of round two. So, um, but oh well, yeah. You know, there's obviously bigger issues in the world right now than than me playing in round three of the season, and now uh, we've got a bigger bridge to cross of you know getting the season off the ground again and um, just getting myself right and be ready for that. Yeah, mate. Well, thank you again for joining us today on the Beyond the 80 podcast and to Neds for sponsoring each and every episode going forward. We've got a bit of a fun show lined up today. We'll take a quick look through the news and then into get a bit of fun about Moses, how well he knows himself and his teammates. And we'll have a look at the latest headlines in rugby league right after this. That's a win. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. Well, thank you for joining us on the Beyond the 80 podcast, joined today by West Tigers co-captain Moses Embai. Uh, Moses, a little bit of news and updates floating around the moment, obviously as a result of COVID-19. Um, probably the biggest at the moment is around this kind of bubble community that's happening. And I guess, um, you know, while there's still a lot of uncertainty around it, probably the biggest thing is that it's, it's, it's a tough position for players to be in and there's kind of no real easy answer with all of this, is there? Yeah, you're certainly right, Dan. It's... Um... You know, they that we're really uh, clutching our straws to get the competition going again. It's, you know, it's really proven how how important it is to so many people. You know, um, not only the players but uh, staff and supporters. We need they, they even they want something to watch and something to do. So, yeah, there's obviously been a bit of speculation around some sort of NRL bubble um, situation. But yeah, look, to be honest, I don't think that'll come to fruition. I think the logistics of it will be a bit too difficult, and also. Just the, I guess the the toll it'll take on the on the players, uh, taken away from their environment. I mean, it would obviously depend on how long would be you'd be expected or needed in yeah. that bubble. But 
um, for some blokes, every 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 individual's uh, situation and circumstances is so different. It'd be so hard to to get everyone to buy in on to on like to, you know, to the same thing and mm. get in the bubble. Yeah, for you, I guess probably as a young father and someone who kind of went through it a lot last year yourself, you probably know a little bit about that being away from home. Like I just probably take you back to halfway through last year. You kind of were on the road a lot for West Tigers. Then you went into origin where you were on the road and then we were on the road again up to Townsville and then on the road again for origin too. And you probably felt like you were home one or two days for a couple of months there. Yeah, seriously, man. That was, that was, that was a tough time really. It, um, it, yeah, you exactly. You explained it perfectly. I was on the road and home for two days at a time, and in that two days, you you sort of trying to jam two weeks of catching up into two days and getting some odd ends done. And um, yeah, it, it was tough, and especially I guess my circumstances are uh, different to a lot of others. But yeah, you know, I got three young kids who are all under the age of five, and all under the age of four at that time. But um, so yeah, that that was a bit of a juggling act, but. You know, it was fun. It was a good experience and a good way to. Um, it was a good experience for everyone, actually, even in my family. And we ended up the, the kids ended up travelling with me for a little bit there. They came up to to Queensland and spent a week up there, which was good. And uh, we just tried to make make it all work and spend as much time together as we could. Mm. Mate, probably the only other major bit of news that's kind of come up this week is around the ladder and the prospect of teams losing points from the first two rounds. It kind of seems that a bit of sanity has prevailed and, and teams will kind of keep those points from the first two games. I guess that, does that kind of seem to be the, the right decision that they're going to get to there? Oh, I think so. Yeah. I, I certainly agree with that. I think, um, you know, the preparation that, and you, you, you would have seen it at, at Tigerland, the preparation that the teams do and the clubs do and the staff do throughout that whole summer period. Um, you know, we've already had the, well, the majority of the season um, taken away. So, uh, at least the, the the teams who have, who have earned those four points or two points, they they certainly deserve to keep those. So um, mm. you know, whatever format eventuates or whatever whatever happens, or whenever we get going, I think the teams who have earned those points on the ladder should should keep those points for sure. Obviously, you weren't playing, but was much said from Madge or the players about those games, those two games in particular, and how point how important those kind of two points or four points were going to be. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, I was I was very, very much um, amongst the playing group, getting getting prepared for the, the two rounds we did play, and um, unfortunately, um, you know, they weren't weren't two of our best rounds. But um, you know, we 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 well, one was pretty good, I guess. But um, you know, we certainly spoke about we do speak about how important every every game is. You know, two points can be the difference when you. Um, I guess it's a bit of a sore spot for the Tigers who don't finish in ninth, but um, you know that that could be the difference between eighth and ninth. Yeah, definitely, and uh, and I think as well, you see guys, you know, you know obviously, the Lua brothers and Adam Dewey, Billy Walters, Zane Musgrove. You know, these are five guys that made their West Tower, I guess, debut in the in that first round, and they're never going to get that back again. You know, there's there's you know guys exactly. around the league who would have made their NRL debut. I think of you know Jake Avarillo at the Bulldogs who debuted in round two. You know, like. Yeah. Those those experiences still kind of count all the same. Yeah, well, every game is so significant. Whether it be a debut, whether it be a win, whether it be a, a loss and a lesson, they're they're all so significant to someone. Um, mm. You know, so it's it made us be a, a fan in the living room. Round one might have been a rivalry between him and his brother or something. You know, it's every game significant. So I think you need to leave, you need to keep that history. It's a part of history now. And mm. you can't you can't take that away from from everyone or mm. anyone. Yeah, yeah. Well, mate, I, I think very well put there, and that probably sums up everything you need to know in the news right now. Uh, up next, we're going to go into our first segment of today with a little game we like to call "Do You Remember?" Do you remember? All right, this is a good one, mate. This is a good one. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us again today on the Beyond the Eighty podcast. We're into our first game called "Do You Remember?" Now, Moses, I just want to warn you: you're coming off. Josh Reynolds last week, who got a perfect three from three and, really? and said his memory was pretty bad. So either the Jesus. questions aren't that difficult, but I think the bar's set pretty high. Let me explain how it's going to work. All right. You'll get three questions that will get harder as we go along. Now, what we've got is we've got the audio of those moments lined up. So what we'll be able to do is once you give your answer, we'll play the audio and we'll see 
see how your footy memory is, okay? Uh, right. So, look, I, I promise you, Josh is the only person that's got a perfect score so far. And <laughs> I, I think there's a little caveat over some of his questions might have been a little too easy. So, <laughs> I think you'll do better than what you think. All right. So, question one. Question one. And I want to take you back to 2015. Okay. Now, this one hurts to bring up as a West Tigers employee. 24 all, West Tigers against the Bulldogs. And it goes into Golden Point. Okay, now I'm sure you remember this game. You kick the winning field goal. It's all amazing and wonderful and all of that stuff for a West Tigers fan. It certainly wasn't either of those. Now, the question I have for you, you obviously kicked the winning field goal. Who threw you the pass? Trent Hodgkinson. Oh, just look at that. Confident. Confident. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I won't forget that one. That was my first ever field goal. Was it really? Yeah, that was my first one. I was probably 10 games in or something, maybe 11 games into my career. Right, well, we'll check the audio just to double check. Fifth tackle, 25 metres out. Hopkinson standing on this side, the right hand side. It's coming to him. He sets himself. Back it comes to Imbai. He hits it. Oh, look at that. One from one, Moses. One from one. Let's keep going, brother. I did, one uh, from one. I did see. Uh, do I have a memory that you then recreated that at training? Is that right? Do you remember uh, doing that? I think that we did, yeah. 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 yeah, we did it as like a promotion thing. Mm. Mm. Good, yeah, good yeah. memories to relive as a West Tigers fan. Thanks. It was. All right, no all right. Worries, so one from one. Off to a good start. All right, question two. We're going to get a little bit tougher now. We can move on from the Bulldogs. You're at West Tigers. You obviously made your club debut. You joined the club in 2018. All right. Now you scored your first try for the club a couple of weeks later. Now the question I've got: Can you tell me what your first try for West Tigers was? Um, yeah, it was at ANZ Stadium against South. I think. Yeah, I think it was against South ANZ Stadium. I think I'm going to say Cheekham passed me the ball. All right, let's check the audio. The Tigers throw Cheekham. Moses Mbai graduates as a Tiger. Scores his first four-pointer. Ah, oh, two yes. from two. <laughs> two from two, <laughs> Moses Embai. Keep it going. All right, all right. Now, I did say they were going to get tougher as they go along. Question three. A memorable game that in your career, but I'm going to go for something a little bit specific on it. So, Bulldogs against Canberra, now 2015. Now, that might not stand out. Once I kind of talk you through the game, I'm sure you'll remember it. Josh Reynolds has kicked a field goal from the sideline pretty late on. You score a try on the siren to win 41-34, okay? Now, you might not remember much about that game, but the Bulldogs had a massive lead. Then the Raiders came all the way back, and then you guys got them at the end. Do you remember much about that one? Yeah, that was probably one of my favourite games ever. All right. Here's the question. How many points in front were you? 24. Oh, let's check the audio. It was a 22. We'll check the audio. We'll check oh. the audio. Bulldogs. The Bulldogs were gone. Physically, they were gone three minutes ago. Down 26 nil. Croker wiped oh. the slate clean. Oh, 26. 26. That's. Oh, I, I nearly want to give you the points there, Moses. I nearly uh, want to give you. That's no, pretty no, close. No, it's no pretty gimmies. close, mate. That's pretty close. No, give me. You said that it was, was one of your favourite games, mate. What was yeah, the only yeah. reason why? Just a big finish. Great oh, it was just, yeah, we. I remember that game in particular. We were um, we had all of our Origin boys out. Yep. So we had, uh, I think we had Hodgkinson out. We had the Morris boys out. We had Josh Jackson out. Um, it might have been someone else. It might have even been Mick Ennis or someone. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, right. it was Tony we Williams Tony. Origin that stage, mate. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. maybe even he was. It was someone. I can't remember exactly who it was, but um. We had all our origin boys out, so uh, and we we sort of we, uh, that's always a tough road trip going down there as well, mm. and we, we made it work. So um, that was yeah, it was a good, it was a memorable game that one. Just on that, mate, what's that like when you kind of have a big lead and then it goes? Is that oh. tough? Is that tough to kind of? It's the worst feeling. It's the worst feeling when you lose momentum and there's this. You can really oh no, you can really feel them. Um, you know, just chasing you and breathing down your neck. You can, you can, you know, you just, and you just, in, you can't stop it. Like they yep. just keep scoring. You're going, oh my god, what, are, what do I have to do here to stop it? <laughs> and then, um, you know, all of a sudden, if you hang in there enough, 
the momentum swings again back in your way, back in your favour, and you can be lucky for us it just swung at the right time. But yeah, we we certainly we certainly cut that one down. Yeah, nice, mate. Well, I'll give you two and a half out of three there, mate. You've done very well. Three tough questions there, so well done, mate. Legend. Thanks, All mate. Right. <laughs> one more break, one more break, and then we're into our final game today. Today with a new segment, we're going to call "Me Against Them," and this is going to see how well the co-captain knows his teammates. That's a win. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. Okay, Moses, thank you for your time today on the Beyond the Eighty podcast. One more game for today, which we've actually called "Me Against Them." Now, how this is work? Very straightforward. We've got three teammates. And three facts about them. You have to allocate the right teammate to the right fact. Does that make sense? Yep. So here's your three players. Here's your three teammates. Matt Eisenhuth, Oliver Clark, and Billy Walters. Ooh. All right. So they're your three. They're your three. Now, they're not, they're not the most common facts about them. So you're going to do well if you get these. But here we go. One of these players is a big fan of the TV show Friends. Who do you reckon? Matt Eisenhuth, Oliver Clark, or Billy Walters? I'm going to go, I'm going to go Billy Walters. Right. Yeah, right. What makes you say Billy there? Well, I don't think it's Eyes, though. So I, I, kind of, I kind of crossed him out early. Yep. Um, well, I've carpooled with Eyes, and he hasn't spoken about it. So I'm okay. crossing him out. <laughs> Oliver. I don't know. I don't know. I've never asked him what he watches on TV, which is, you know, I, may, I should do that. And then, so I'm just going to leave with Billy. Last, okay. Last well, mate, one from one. Beautiful. Billy Walters, big fan of the TV show Friends. All right. Your second one here. One of these players' his favorite movie is Goodwill Hunting. I'm going to say. Goodwill Hunting. I'm going to go either. Oh, that'd be a good will hunting, man. It's Oliver Clark. Really? Oh, yeah. I Ollie's, that'd be too deep for him. Ollie's a big, big Goodwill hunting fan. Bit of Robin Williams, Matt Damon. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not your fault. It's, oh, what a movie. Yeah, I, I, movie. I, I, I thought it'd be a bit... I mean, it might be Izo. It might be Izo, mate, but I, I've got it's that down. definitely both of them. I've got that down. <laughs> and, and, and my last fact is uh, Izo's favourite rugby league game, other than his debut is the 1997 Grand Final. He must be a Newcastle fan. Stop it. Surely Stop not. Stop it. Surely not. He's taking the down. Piss. That's what I've got down. So He's taking the piss there. All right. We might, have to, we might have to clarify that one, mate. <laughs> yeah, we will. Certainly. Okay. Well, yeah. again, I've got, you, I've got you at two out of three there, mate. That's, that's pretty close. I'll take that. The old Goodwill hunting's thrown him off. So. I'll mate, take that. that. That brings us to the end of our games and the end of today's show. Just quickly, mate, you're obviously back in Sydney now. What's on for the rest of the week? Um, oh, man, I'm going to get a bit of training done. I'm going to uh, just, just like I said, I think I'm going to keep the kids occupied, get some Easter stuff going on, maybe do a bit of arts and crafts and then um, eat a bit of chockey over the weekend. Are you, are you a much of a chocolate guy? Is that, is that a bit oh, of Oh, yeah, dark chocolate, bro. Okay. All right, yeah, well, definitely. We'll let you dark have a little treat man. over the weekend, mate. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> no one's going to hear this, so it's fine. You'll be fine. Very good. All right, <laughs> well, brother. Thank you, Moses, for your time today. Thank you to Neds for your support, and thank you to everyone for listening in. The iTunes reviews and all the ratings, it's certainly appreciated. Uh, Moses, thank you for joining us today. Too easy. Thank you, man. Thank we'll, you. We'll be back soon with another episode of Beyond the Addy Podcast. We'll catch you next time.